All right, so we got a patient here, very deep veins. We are actually just accessing for blood draw because it's so deep. So I'm going to use a power glide to reach that vein right there. Okay. How do I know that's a vein? It's Mickey Mouse, part of the ear. This is the artery right there. One time stick, right? That's what we're going for. Okay. So I see the assessment. I'm looking at the C. I'm going up and down because I just want to make sure that there's no curves. There is, look at that split or bifurcation here. We're conjoining it looks like the closer we get to the axillary. But for the most part, it's pretty deep. I like deeper veins because it helps me to see better. I have more room, wiggle room to adjust. Are right, you ready? Yes. And for this prick, the skin is the most sensitive part, so I'm going to go pretty fast so she doesn't feel so much of it. Three, two, one, stick. Not too bad, right? No. Okay, so now I'm trying to locate. There you go. So do you see that movement at the top here? And do you guys see how I'm bouncing the needle? Okay, I'm bouncing the needle. I'm not going in and out very hard or very much. There we go. I'm looking for that micro movement and looking for a highlight, which is most likely the needle. So we go, I know that's the shadow. Okay, you guys see that shadow there? I know that's not the tip. Oh, it could be actually, let's see. And this is also why I don't like using the needle guide because you need to fan the probe to be able to see. And I'll show you what I do with that and the needle. And unfortunately, with the needle guides, you can't do that. Okay, there we go. So following, following the shadows, here we go. That's, I believe that's the tip. There it is. Change an image while I'm bouncing it. Okay, just these micro bounces. Try not to advance the needle, but in and out to be able to see movement so I can get tips. So that's the tip right there. Moving it up and down, left and right. Can you feel that? Not really, right? Who, me? Yeah. No, I don't feel okay, it. Okay, cool. Now we're about to hit fascia, so it is going to be, we'll see what happens. That's yeah, pretty deep. I'm going to have to go at a much steeper angle. I'm sorry, hon. I know it's weird to have that needle in you. How's that feel there? It's okay. Bearable? Yes. Basically the arm is just tired from being held oh. in this position. All right, so I advanced till I saw the bounce, which is right above the vein right here. Okay. Now, some of you asked, how do I know I'm above or below? Do you see that extra white piece right above the vein that's moving up and down? Okay. Especially right there. That's the tip. Now, it hasn't punctured yet. It's about to be punctured. I just need to. I could feel that. Felt that? I felt, yeah. Good. I feel that. So now what I'm going to do. Advanced. Ooh. Feels very resistive, so I got to be careful. In the middle of something.
Okay, let's see how that does. I'm expecting some resistance, which I don't. Beautiful. Okay, the reason why I expected some resistance is because it was such a steep angle. And I was afraid that the guide wire or the catheter wouldn't bend with the guide wire as easily. We're about to find out if it worked, and I think it did. Beautiful. Look at that blood return. Love it. I love it. Okay, good blood return there. Why did I take the lure lock off? Because I'm an idiot. But luckily, I'm not here to place an IV. I'm just using the IV to draw the blood because her, her vein was so deep under the skin. And someone suggested that I start upside down, especially if I'm afraid that the uh, pressure from the downward pressure of the blood hitting the bottom of the tubing may hemolyze the blood. And of course, you're going to gently roll the blood. Think of your RBCs as crystal orbs. Some of them are very fragile. The more you shake it up, and the more uh, trauma you cause to the blood itself, we're going to hemolyze more of it, making the sample uh, unusable 